I'm Justin Davis, and we're going to have some fun today. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Drone Camps channel. It seems like they listen to the community again. I have to give it to Flywoo. Um, for for years now, it seems like we've had this Explorer 4-inch, um, sort of sub 250G, long-range category, ultralight, uh, very popular in the drone community. And now, after all the complaints that they had about the first version of this, it seems that they have addressed some of those problems and came back with a version two of the Explorer. Now, this was my first love of the four inch category, ultralight category uh, with GPS on board. You can also load iNav on this baby. Um, it comes with a Goku flight controller. It has an 850 milliwatt VTX on this baby, uh, four inch props, NIN motors, and room enough for a camera up front. And uh, I'm running like a, a 4S 750 milliamp battery and I'm getting like 10 minutes flight time out of that. If you put a Lion on here, you can get like 20 minutes plus flight time uh, on something this small, which is kind of crazy. So I'll try to put some links down below for some Lion packs. Uh, if you just want to freestyle it and get about 10 minutes flight time still, you can run an 850 milliamp pack down there. So, but the Flywoo camera on the front today is my GP9. This is a D-Case Naked GoPro, and we're gonna shoot 4K. You can you can shoot 4K at 60 frames per second with this little camera. Um, and but most importantly, it's 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 better in my opinion. Again, I gotta keep preaching this. It's better than the GoPro Bones in my opinion because it has a front screen on it for under $400. The price point on the GoPro Bones is like $399, but it has no screen on it. So Flywoo put a screen on theirs for under that price, uh, and it will work with the included cable that goes right on your balance port. So you can plug it straight to your battery, or you can run it off a of 5 volt from your flight controller. So uh, it's got the best of both worlds with this camera, and it was built specifically for the FPV community, which I, I still I think GoPro is trying to understand. But, you know, it is a large company, so um, they'll catch up eventually. But for now, GoPro, um, the one that you want to get for a naked GoPro would be made by Flywheel. So without further ado, let's go ahead and test out the V2, see how it does. Then we'll come back into the bench and we'll check this little guy out on the bench and, and see if you like this one for a long range ultralight rig uh, with up to about a 20 minute flight time. So uh, let's go ahead and send it. Here we go. Let's do some flying.
Okay guys, let's go ahead and jump into the review part. Welcome back from the flight test. On the scale, we have 287 grams with the Flywood GP9 on there. If you don't want to run a naked GoPro on it, you could probably get it a little bit lighter with like a 30 gram camera, and you can get it under 250 grams. You can also run a 650 milliamp battery on there and be well under the 250 gram mark with your action camera. So if you're not worried about weight wise, you can add the GP9 or the GP10 and have a D-case naked GoPro on there and get some amazing cinema video. Um, now, I just have it sitting next to this little bottle of Calvados here because, well, it's an airplane bottle of liquor and it, I just wanted to see scale-wise how small this thing is. Uh, with the four inch props, the dead cat frame, uh, we have uh, quite an ultralight and portable long range rig. And, you know, I have flown miles out with these and they're just tons of fun. And this one is actually priced in uh, also at around $219 right now. Um, that's without a receiver. You can also get it with TBS Crossfire or ELRS if you want to. Now, in my opinion, aside from being an ultra light quad, this is a really great intro to long range. If you were thinking about getting a six inch, say like a seven inch quad, and you wanted to really get out there and send it before you send thousands of dollars out there and lose your quad, you kind of have to understand how signal works, how it drops, how you can have signal loss in different situations. Different environmental situations will cause you to lose signal from your transmitter. Now, the cool thing about this particular quad is not only is it dead cat, I, I love that. Um, this quad has GPS on the back, and, and so many times, I've told friends of mine, like, you have to have GPS when you're going to fly long range because uh, if you lose signal, the the thing's going to drop to the ground uh, or in the river if you're flying down a river. Now, with GPS and it's set up in beta flight properly, when the quad loses signal, this GPS is going to make the quad level out. It's going to start to fly up. Um, now, that can be good and bad. If there's trees above you, you crash into the river anyway, um, but if most chances most times are you're going to level out and then the signal's going to come immediately back and you're going to keep flying along in your acro um, it's kind of weird because when it happens it kind of twitches and i've talked about this before with seven inch quads i was flying the uh, iflight chimera the first version down a river and i went around behind some trees and bam i lost the crossfire signal and it did that. It, it immediately started to twitch, but it twitches to level, which is great. Um, so it automatically level and start to fly up. Um, so that's a really, really good thing. And again, this frame is from Dave C FPV. We've, we've seen this style frame before, but, um, this time around on the VTX side of things, we have 800 milliwatt in the back that could probably get you out there at least, uh, six miles. And we have the Goku flight controller in there. It is a separate ESC stack as well. So uh, it's not an AIO. So if one burns out or the other, you can replace it. I've got my crossfire on the bottom right here as well. Immortal T is mounted on the bottom with this nice uh, TPU mount. We have TPU bumpers on the outside edges of the arms and we have a lost beeper. So on the very back, there's a little tiny button underneath this TPU mount right here. So after you turn the quad off or it loses signal, this little beeper will beep for like two days. Um, that's really important if you're out there, say a mile out and you lose it and you're not sure, quite sure where it went, you're looking at your DVR, but you need to go back and find it the next day. This will still be beeping the very next day. Um, the bad side of that is that if you crash somewhere locally where people can hear it, they're gonna know where your this quad is in a vicinity. So um, sometimes people will try to go and get your quad. I've had to tell people, hey, drop that, that's my quad. Um, <laughs> it does happen. We have an XT30 in the back as well, and I love the fact that they have this longer antenna. This is key for flying long range especially you know when you turn around when your quad turns one way or the other you want to make sure you have a constant signal back to your quad uh, back to your goggles and that's what these long antennas do for us if you had a stubby on the back as soon as i turn around to come home we have signal um, loss because of it's hard to penetrate through the battery and the action camera and the frame. So uh, that's nice that they raise that up and they're paying attention to that. But that's been something that we've had on this quad since the v, uh, V1 version. But I felt like this one flew fine. I, I also feel like it can freestyle. If you want to freestyle it, you can do that. If you want to get a super long flight time, use the Lion pack. There is a, um, a, a Zod LiPo pack that's around 3,500 milliamps, a 4S pack. 
I've used it on this quad before and got like 15 to 20 minutes. So if you want to get a super long flight time, I'll put that link down below for that particular battery. Uh, if you want to freestyle it, I recommend using a LiPo. You can't really freestyle with a Lion. It's not a good idea. It has a super low uh, voltage pump. And, and what you need to do is to have a higher voltage range uh, for a higher throttle range, you want to use a LiPo. Uh, it, the the Lions can't handle a real high voltage spike, uh, otherwise you could could damage the battery. So um, take care of your 18650s. They're they're not quite as punchy as a LiPo can be. So I also had the plug-in for my GP9 already there on the quad, just waiting for my GP9. Um, so that was pretty nice. I, I just wish they had given me some type of mount for the front of this. So I just kind of had to rig it up real quick and uh, see what kind of footage we come back with. And, and actually, you know, VHB, this stuff is just great. I love it. Um, it, it it's not something that you would want to use if you were freestyling because you would probably throw this thing right off of the quad. But uh, for just some, some fun flying, you can get away with this type of setup. Uh, I would recommend using some zip ties. Uh, they're always your friend in that type of situation. But if you're looking to get a GP9 or a GP10, again, I, I recommend getting the Indy filter pack uh, from Flywoo as well. Uh, I'll put the link down below for the GP9 and the GP10 and the filter pack because I'm, I'm having good luck with this camera so far. And this is going to be my uh, daily driver coming up this year for sure. So uh, I appreciate you guys checking out this review again. And uh, be sure to subscribe, and if you do subscribe, you're going to be in for that DJI FPV drone that we're giving away. It's a bundle on the channel with a case. So stay tuned for more reviews, guys, and uh, check this one out in the link down below if you want an ultralight long-range quad. This one is uh, a much better, much better quad than the original V1 Explorer LR. So uh, good job, Flywheel, and mostly everything they're coming out with lately seems to be like hitting it out of the park and i love that they're listening to the fpb community we really need that right now uh, because there is a chip shortage and you don't want to be buying um, something with your hard-earned cash that's not worth it so i appreciate you be well guys and fly safe happy fpv and i'll see you on the next one